السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفى سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه وبعد الفيورز فيور ويلكم تو ذا فيري فيرست اديشن اوف يور بروجرام اسكودا لايف اديشن افتر ذا بليسد مانث اوف رمضان اند افتر ذا عيد فيكيشن اي هوب اند اي براي ذات يو اول انجويد يور عيد فيكيشن And I hope and I pray that you all remember to continuously pray for your Muslim brothers and sisters in Gaza, in Myanmar, in Syria, in Iraq, and everywhere. Now it is a duty of every Muslim, whether it is Jumu'ah prayer, Eid prayer, night prayer, at any prayer, to include them in your dua. Dua is the sharpest weapon. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and accept the best of our deeds. Ameen. I would like to remind you with our phone numbers and contact informations in the beginning of this edition. Our phone numbers beginning with the area code are 002-011-250-08679. Alternatively, area code 002-01-00246-4583. My Facebook page is the R. Muhammad Salah official. And the email addresses are ask at huda.tv and gardens at huda.tv. Barakallahu feekum. I believe we should remind one another with what is next, what is after Ramadan. Especially today, mashallah, is the seventh day of the month of Shawwal. One week is gone. I still remember the other day, you remember, a few days before Ramadan. Then in the beginning of Ramadan, when we started counting how many days left, and we said, soon, inshallah, we'll say, happy Eid, and soon we'll say, oh Allah, accept from us, our fasting and worship during Ramadan. And in a couple months, we'll be expecting another event and another event and so on. So now, for those who have taken a long break since the end of Ramadan and the Eid day, I would like to remind you that there's only three weeks left to take advantage of this time of Shawwal. Advantage of a great opportunity that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said in the sound hadith, which is collected by uh, Imam al-Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah and others. It's a sound hadith and narrated by Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. May Allah be pleased with him. Man sama Ramadan, thumma atba'ahu sitta min shawwal, fa ka'annama sama al-dahr. Which means he who fasts during the month of Ramadan then follows that by fasting six days during the month of shawwal, shall receive the reward of fasting for the whole dahr. Now what is the word dahr? What does it mean? A dahr by itself literally means lifetime, lifespan. And here it means if the person happened to fast during Ramadan and fast the six days of the month of Shawwal. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned more than once, he mentioned in Surah Al-An'am for innocence, مَنْ جَاءَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ فَلَهُ عَشْرُ أَمْثَالِهَا which indicates that the reward for any good deed is at least 10 times more. 10 times more. Each good deed you do, you receive the reward for it 10 times more from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as minimum. So if we calculate according to the, minim to the minimum, fasting for the whole month of Ramadan will be equivalent to fasting for 10 months. And fasting for 6 days in the month of Shawwal, each day will be equivalent to 10 days, 10 good deeds. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the reward for fasting this voluntary fasting during the month of Shawwal at least 10 times more. So that is 60. Well, that means if you fulfill what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said, you will be rewarded as if you have fasted for the whole year. And if you happen by the grace of Allah to do that on a regular basis, every year you fast during Ramadan, then during Shawwal you fast for six voluntary days, then that means 
the reward will be for fasting for the whole lifetime. That is the meaning of the word ad-dahr, ad-dahr, lifetime. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to observe this kind of fasting and resume voluntary fasting Mondays, Thursdays, the three wide days of every lunar month, 13th, 14th, and 15th, as much as you can. I know it's hot, it's summertime, and the day is kind of long, but guess what? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ صَامَ يَوْمًا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بَاعَدَ اللَّهُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ النَّارِ سَبْعِينَ خَرِيفًا He who happened to fast for one single day for the sake of Allah, underline this word, we'll go back to it, Allah will distance him from the far of hell, the distance of 70 years of traveling, 70 years for fasting one day. Some of the ulama say the word fi sabilillah normally refers to jihad and on the battlefield. And some say it is much broader than that, either way. So fasting has a great virtues. We should, inshallah, take advantage of uh, uh, experiencing fasting in Ramadan, so we're used to it. And before the end of Shawwal, make sure, inshallah, you fast the six days uh, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the reward for it along with Ramadan as if you have been fasting for the whole year round. Also, it is not required to fast the six days consecutively. Rather, you can spread them throughout the month of Shawwal. But why we encourage people to fast them as soon as possible? Because sometimes when you slow down the month will slip away out of your hands before you get to do it. Maybe you just fast for five days and there's one day left. So try your best, inshallah, azajal. Um, in a few days, people will be fasting 13th, 14th, and 15th, and there will be also Thursday, and will be followed by another Monday. So you can actually take advantage of all of that together. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to what is best. Um, we have a few questions from uh, the questions which I received on my page. The first one is <clears throat> from Jamaa Muhammad. The questioner says, how our salah will be shown to the Prophet وسلم, as it is written down by the malaika and would be presented our deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It seems like there is a slight confusion there. You're actually uh, mixing between a hadith, which is a sound hadith, uh, narrated by Aws ibn Aws, may Allah be pleased with him, in which the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ مِنْ أَفْضَلِ أَيَّامِكُمْ يَامُ الْجُمُعَةِ Amongst uh, your best days, Friday. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فِيهِ خُلِقَ آدَمْ وَفِيهِ قُبِضْ وَفِيهِ النَّفْخَةِ وَفِيهِ الصَّاخَةِ On Friday, Adam was created, and Friday his soul was collected by the angels of death. And on Friday, angel Israfil will blow in the trumpet. And uh, also, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَأَكْثِرُوا فِيهِ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ عَلَيْهِ So take advantage of this day, which is one of the best days of your days, by sending as many salah and taslim upon me. As-salah here does not mean the prayer. As-salah in this hadith does not refer to the namaz. To the prayer. It refers to sending the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet ﷺ. And the word presented before me or shown to me is explained in the hadith. He said, فَأَكْثِرُوا فِيهِ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ عَلَيَّ فَإِنَّ صَلَاتَكُمْ مَعْرُوضَةٌ عَلَيَّ That is the meaning of the word shown to me. مَعْرُوضَةٌ عَلَيَّ Whenever you send the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet ﷺ, that will be shown to the Prophet. That will be presented to the Prophet ﷺ. How? We don't know. We, we don't have access to that. But we have been told, number one in this hadith, when the companions inquired about how would this happen after the Prophet ﷺ would die and his body would decompose. They said, how would that happen and your body will decompose? And وَقَدْ أَرَمْ And Nabi ﷺ said, that is not going to happen. My body would not decompose. Because Allah has ordered the earth not to touch, not to decay the bodies of the prophets, all the prophets of Allah. And we also mentioned that that is applicable to the martyrs as well. We have seen, Allah, 
an image of somebody they dug his grave for a reason or another in Gaza who was martyred 16 years ago and subhanallah his blood was still fresh his body his skin is like he was buried a few hours ago so Al-Anbiya and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said inna Allah harrama ala al-ardi an ta'kul ajasad al-anbiya also in another hadith it says that there are angels whose job is to tour the earth to collect whoever sends the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then transmit it to him so that he would reply to them Assalamu alaikum Sister Aisha Assalamu alaikum Sister Aisha. Salam alaikum, Sheikh Muhammad Salam. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sister Aisha? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. What about you, Sheikh Muhammad? Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah, we're all fine. Thank you, Sister Aisha. Do you have any questions today? Yeah, actually, um, I am a rebirth Muslim. Uh, I uh, embrace Islam um, last 2008. You know, Sister Aisha, it would be best if you can mute your TV and hear me from uh, your handset, from the phone. Can you hear me? Sister Aisha? Okay, brothers, can you tell her to try again, please? Barakallah fikum. Brother Isa from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Isa. Wa alaikum salam, How are you, brother? Wa alaikum salam, wa rahmatullah. Go ahead. Fine, sir. Uh, my question is that. Uh, about the uh, property that was stolen by somebody, if you buy it at a price lesser than the one that is sold at a uh, market, how is the rule of this? Mm, Brother Isa, I apologize, I didn't get a word. If you can slow down. For instance, now, for example, the, if a property was stolen by somebody. A property? Yes. If, or if that property was stolen by somebody, and if you go and buy it with a price lower than that of the market they sell it, what is the ruling concerning this? For example, that property costs 10 naira at market, and if you know that that property that you are buying is stolen, if, if you buy it at, for example, for 7 naira, what is the ruling of this? Okay, let me, let me make sure that I got you right. You're asking about buying a property for way lesser than the market price. And you know that its value or the price, the seller is selling it for um, much lesser than the market price, whether this is permissible or not. Am I right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Jazakallah khair. Well, alhamdulillah, Allah made me able to understand your question. Um, there is something called ghubna. Al-Ghubn is been condemned in the Quran in Surah Al-Mutaffifin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَيْلٌ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ Al-Tatfif is some sort of cheating. That when you sell, you're going to get the highest bid, the highest price. And uh, you're going to get all the benefits, even on account of the buyer. Then when you buy, you're going to get the maximum benefit, even if it would hurt the seller you would get the least price, even less than the, the, the market price. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be fair in selling, in buying, in business and trade. And that shows whether the person is really practicing or not, is really an honest human being or not. This is a practice which should crown your religious commitment, selling, buying, honesty, al-amana, al-amana. So basically, if the person, the sales person or the seller knows that the market price is 13 and he's selling it for 10 and he knows that that he knows best that his property is worth that much but he's selling it for less than that and you're aware that he knows 
and he agrees to that, that's called ijab and qabul and no problem. If you'd like to be very pious, you say, no, I would buy it for that much and you pay extra and that was the practice of Imam Abu Hanifa. May Allah have mercy on him. When a woman came to him with a fabric cloth and uh, she said, I'm selling it for a hundred dirham. He said, no, it's worth more than that. She said, okay, 200, 300, 500, and he bought it for 500. I don't think any of us would do that. But what I'm trying to say is at least be fair. Do not take advantage of the ignorance of the seller. Sometimes the seller is in a tight condition. He needs the cash innocently. Do not take advantage of that. Some people would do. Do not be like them. Because guess what? You can be in another trouble once you buy it right away and you'll be in the same pit because it's all credit. But when you try to help people, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Rahimallahu rajulan samhan idha ba'a wa idha shtara wa idha qtaba. Very beautiful hadith. Allah may have mercy on a person who is easy, pardoning and forgiving, kind in selling, in buying, and in collecting his debt, and in asking for his loan which he lent to somebody. is a gentle person. Now, if the salesperson did not know, if the seller did not know that he, the, 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 the price he sold his property is way lesser than the market price, then later on he figured out he can actually file a case in an Islamic court in the name of al ghubni because he was wronged. Somebody took advantage of him. If the difference, if the margin is very big and he can collect his property back, and pay you. This is, I'm, I'm covering the whole question from all different perspectives, from the moral part and from the legal part. Barakallah fikum. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Aisha from Philippines. Assalamu alaikum, Aisha. Hey, I'm so sorry I called back again. No problem. Go ahead. You said you accepted Islam 2010 or 8? 8. Yeah, I want to ask a question. I have only one question to ask. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, regarding the, uh, I want to know the, um, uh, what is the sign to me when the Laylatul Qadr comes to me. I don't know. I, I, uh, it's not allowed to say um, a lie on that time, but. The 26 on Thursday, there is something happened to me that I see and I smell and I uh, I see something from the sky. From the first time, there is some uh, air coming to my face because the time I'm reading the Quran outside, but I don't know that uh, that is real or what. But I see it by my own eyes and I smell by my own nose and I feel it by my own flesh. There is um, air coming to my face. I smell uh, like. Um, and which like night was that, Sister light. Aisha? Which night of Ramadan? A very, very nice perfume. Which night was that night? That was the uh, 26th of Thursday, the last 10 days of uh, Ramadan. The last three days of Ramadan, you said the 26th or the 27th? 26th, it's Thursday, 27th, I guess so. Oh, that is Thursday the 27th, yeah. Y yeah. Okay, Barakallah Fiki, thank you, Sister Aisha. As we agreed, Laylatul Qadr is the most peaceful night of the year, simply because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرِ Then he said, سَلَامٌ he said it's a peaceful night in the ayah before he said because the angels along with Jibreel alayhi salam would descend to fill the earth so there is no room for shayateen. It's like covered with mercy and peace, comfort and so on. That is true. Um, and we also agreed that there is no point to say it was last night or I witnessed Laylatul Qadr as long as you're still in Ramadan because that may uh, slow some people down from practicing. They say, well, it was last night, it's over. Or, alhamdulillah, yes, I witnessed Laylatul Qadr, that's it. This is all what I wanted. 
It's better than 83 years and a couple months of worship. That's it. I don't need to do anything else as far as the voluntary acts of worship. But after Ramadan, people may ask and inquire about it. Some people in, on the night of the 29th in the Haram, MashaAllah, there was, uh, MashaAllah, thunder, heavy rain. And at Maghrib time, it was raining very much, a lot of rain in, in, in uh, the first floor in the Haram. It was all wet. And that's a very good sign, okay. Uh, the whole night was very peaceful and blessed. And also Thursday, as you said, the night of the 27th, which is uh, uh, Friday was the 27th of Ramadan. So Thursday evening was the night of Friday. And the night of the 27th, also many people say it so. In any case, alhamdulillah wa shukrullah, if you have been working hard, uh, in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, then I can assure you for sure you have witnessed Laylat al-Qadr because it is one of those nights. But I'm not sure which night was it for sure. Whenever we were young, we used to go out after Fajr or if we are in I'tikaf, stretch our necks out in order to see from the Masjid sun at its, its rising moment. Uh, whether it is clear like the moon without the, 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 the rays and the, uh, the shining light which burns the eyes or not. But alhamdulillah, shukla, as you grow up, you know that your duty is to worship Allah over the last 10 months of Ramadan as the Prophet sallallahu used to do with regards to the voluntary ibadah. Ahya layla, the whole night will be up in worship. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. Um... <clears throat> the following question is from brother Ammar Koli. Ammar says, how do you pay back when you miss two rak'ahs in Maghrib prayer? Which means if you attended the last rak'ah of the Maghrib prayer with the Imam, how would you make up the rest? In the sound hadith, Al-Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَمَا أَدْرَكْتُمْ فَصَلُّوا وَمَا فَاتَكُمْ فَأَتِمُوا and this hadith is collected by the Imam al-Bukhari. I shall explain it, inshallah, in a few minutes after these calls. Sister Nadia first from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Nadia. Wa alaikum as Hello? Yes, go ahead, Sister Nadia, please. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sheikh, I have uh, one question, but it is a little bit lengthy. And I hope that when I hang up, then you will answer. Because my husband also wants to listen the answer sure. uh, so on, the te uh, on the television. Uh, my question is uh, regarding uh, uh, covering the face. I heard many times, uh, of course, from you and from all uh, different uh, uh, shapes that uh, if there is ikhtalaaf, but that is uh, m most, much better to cover the face. But uh, my, uh, I, I, I always I was thinking, and alhamdulillah, I was covering my hair and uh, from, even from my family members like my husband's brothers and uh, my brother-in-law, all of them, I was covering. But every, uh, but I was, uh, that also I know that in uh, ikhtalaf is on covering faces only on the uh, clean face, like no makeup and that. So I, every time when uh, Ramadan I was feeling so, especially on e day, I was feeling so hard that uh, my whole Ramadan is uh, going in waste when I put makeup on Eid. So this year also I was uh, trying my best to start this and um, uh, alhamdulillah on Eid day, the first day of Eid because I didn't want to ruin my camel uh, and all these fasting, so I started to cover my face even in my family uh, members. So family members means my husband's brothers and my sister's husband like this. Yeah. But uh, the, uh, first of all my husband alhamdulillah he was not opposing me. But after that, he was feeling that it is because my family members, they were sitting together and they were talking also. So I felt that uh, it is more hard to avoid uh, because in that, I heard my intent that it is 100% uh, uh, not allowed to have jokes with them or uh, long conversation with them. So I was thinking that if I will cover my face, that will be better uh, to stay away from these things. Mm -hmm. So I stayed away. But now my husband is telling that it's my, uh, his, his uh, wish that I have to, okay, I have to cover face in front of everyone, but not uh, in front of his brothers or my sister's husband who are very close and very uh, close in our family members. And he said, okay, don't do makeup, but uh, don't cover your face. So I want the references from you, the both things, because I want to study more. And uh, I, I still I didn't remove it. 
from two days is asking me to uh, remove it in front of him. But I didn't remove because I felt so bad that I started and how can I remove it? Thank so my, my husband is telling the first things you should do, uh, the other things more, the much better. But Alhamdulillah, I'm praying, I'm fasting, and uh, zakat also I'm giving. So I said that no one can be perfect uh, suddenly. Slowly, slowly, everything can be better. Jazakillahu khairan, Sister Nadia, thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Abu Safwan from Kuwait. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh, how are you? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Brother Abu Safwan? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. Sheikh, I have a long list of questions. Okay. Now, I hope uh, you may cover in this session. Uh, can I go ahead? Of course you can. Okay. Uh, the first thing is, what is the fine difference between Sahifa and the book? Okay. Sahifa and a book. Yes. Because uh, we say in Surah Al-Ala, you know, Sayyid Ibrahim Abu Musa. So the question is, we know that there are four books, maybe we know the Zabur, Torah, Injil, and Quran. And yeah. Musa was awarded with the Torah. So was he given, this Torah is a synonym of the Sahifa, or he was given Sahifa in addition to Torah. Yeah. The other question is, uh, this Jesus, uh, we understood, uh, peace be upon him, that Isa, alayhi salam, mainly come to revive the Sharia of the Musa alayhi salam. Mm. So then what about the Injil? What was, it is a revised revise edition of the Torah or he was given, what kind of account he was given while he is supposed to follow the Sharia of the Torah, uh, of the Musa alayhi salam. Okay. And the other thing in the present is, you know, political, uh, you know, scenario or arena, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ayah 26, Allah said, Kala fa'inna muharramatun alayhim arba'ina sanata for Bani Israel, that the country is forbidden for them for 40 years. And then in Allah Al-Imran, in 179 Ayah, He said, Ma kan Allah uliyadar al-mu'minin Allah ma'amtum alayhi hatta yamid al-khabitha min al-tayyimi. He will not leave the believers in the present state unless He separates, you know, this evil with the truth. My question is, this Palestinian suffering, these Gaza people, 1967, they were occupied, now 2014, it is 57 years. And the period exceeded the punishment even this Bani Israel had, 40 years. So, this, uh, how we going to, you know, relate this, how we going to explain this. And another uh, thing which is pop up in mind, everywhere, wherever there is a happening, the Muslims are being killed. Innocent, you know, children, you know, and women, and even practicing Muslim majority, they are being killed. And uh, regardless, is it Gaza or in anywhere else or in the tsunami? It's a tsunami or it is a uh, an earthquake. Why those hypocrites or I don't know these evil people? Those their names are like uh, you know Abdullah or Abdulaziz. They are, you know, they are safe, they are prosper, but always uh, this, uh, you know, the practice in Muslims, they are being uh, suffered. How we explain this, you know? These are the questions I have pop up in my mind. If you could kindly, you know, do that, Allah khair. Wa jazakum, barakallahu feekum. And mashallah, you took a lot of time, now we're going to take a short break. And inshallah, soon after the break, I shall begin by answering Sister Nadia's question. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Reading the Qur'an is a blessing. Understanding its translation is beautiful. But diving in depth and extracting pearls from it is simply amazing. Do they not ponder upon the Qur'an? Every week, inshallah, we will dig deep and reflect on the verses of the Qur'an one by one. Qur'an in depth with Sheikh Ibrahim Zaydan only on Huda TV
does Islam say over the, you know, what is the purpose of our lives? When you go to the grave, the believer will be asked three questions. How many, you know, destruction of marriages, of society, of family ties have come because of statements made on someone's tongue by what someone has said. What Sharia really is, think about it. We want you to think about it, think about life, think about your purpose in life, think about the creator of this earth we live in, think about how you should worship this creator and who this creator is. That's our aim behind this show here on Huda TV. Let's focus on what Islam itself says as a legal Islamic religious system. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Of course I expect all the questions, not some, not most, to focus on what Abu Safwan have inquired about. It's a dilemma. And to many, including those who are following me on my page, it seems like they are in a state of confusion. And these questions are very repetitive. And I believe it is our role to explain what Allah has mentioned in this regard, whether in the Quran or in the previous books, which the Quran supports its authenticity, or on the tongue of the Prophet Sallallahu or the seerah, the events of what happened with the companions and with the Prophet. This is very important. And the state of confusion is simply the result of not being educated in our religion. If somebody did not study the seerah, if somebody only heard about Prophet Muhammad وسلم, by reading what Michael Hart wrote about him, which is positive, but it's not sufficient. What uh, Orientalists have described Prophet Muhammad and his biography or his lifestyle with, but that's not sufficient. Somebody did not study the seerah, did not read what the companions described their life, the experiences with the Prophet is expected to be in a state of confusion and ask those typical questions. Before I come to that, uh, Sister Nadia said my husband is waiting and uh, he'd like to hear the answer as well. As you said, Sister Aisha, or Sister Nadia, I'm sorry. You're right. MashaAllah, it's been now 10 years. We've been repeating the same answer. There are two different opinions. And I don't really agree with those who take one view and present it as that is the uh, only valid view. I don't agree with that. That is not fair. Because the other view, even I don't agree with it, but it is valid. It is adopted by majority of the scholars, by very respected scholars. They have their own references. Not because I believe that women should cover their faces. I say that's it. It's a wajib and I do not mention the other view. So I will continue to discuss this as long, inshallah, as we live and we discuss it because this is something we inherited. You know, the, the companions have their saying in the Sagard, at tabiin and the scholars, Al-Imam al-Shafi'i, wa Ahmed, wa Malik, wa Abu Hanifa. So we have to respect all of that. As Sheikh Al-Albani, may Allah have mercy on him, has a view in the Sagard that covering the face is not a wajib. But we say, in our view, and in the light of the available references, we believe that women should cover their faces. Okay, so there are two different views. The question is, if a woman said, no, I will, get, I will go with the opinion of Sheikh Al-Albani, and the majority of the scholars said, fine, no problem. May Allah bless you. Jazakallah khairan. But you know that it is better to take the other view. But she insists, okay. Another sister said, no, it's a wajib, and I'm going to cover my face. Okay, thank you so much. May Allah bless you. But you have to understand that covering the face or wearing the hijab in general is before every non-mahram. And every non-mahram include alhamu. Alhamu is your brother-in-law, relatives of your husband, because 
they are not your mahram. So when a woman decides to wear hijab or decides to wear niqab, what is the difference between hijab and niqab? Uh, let, let me discuss this after this call. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Carmen from Philippines. Yes, sir. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, doctor. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, sister Carmen. Sister Carmen, go ahead, please. Okay, long delay. I can't afford to um, take that much time waiting for the call. Uh, try again, please, Sister Carmen. We can leave your question uh, with the control and they will deliver it to me, inshallah, during the show. Al hijab is what a woman wears to cover her aura, whether the entire body from head to toe or the entire body except for the hands and the face. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah An Nur in ayah number 31, وَلَا يُبِدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا مَا ظَهْرَ مِنْهَا The ayah begins with, وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْضُضْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ وَاحْفَظْنَ فُرُوجَهُنَّ وَلَا يُبِدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا مَا ظَهْرَ مِنْهَا Command the believing women to lower some of their gaze, not to look at the aura of men, of course. And to guard their chastity and not to show their adornment except what normally appears. Uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, said that refers to the outer garment which he cannot hide. Sa'id ibn Jubayr and others are of the view that what Mazahara minha refers to the hands and the face. So we'll continue to transmit the different views in this regard. The scholars who say that wearing the niqab, which is the face veil. So al-hijab is what covers the entire body. al niqab what covers the face only. That's why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَا تَنْتَقِبُ الْمُحْرِمَةِ وَلَا تَلْبَسُ الْقُفَّزَيْنِ A woman during her ihram should not cover her face nor wear gloves. These two parts should show during hajj, during ihram for hajj or umrah, which indicates according to the diversion meaning, which is a very effective and original principle in the principles of jurisprudence, that in original conditions, in other times other than the ihram and hajj, normally women are covering their faces and hands. Okay? The scholars who say that it is recommended, not mandatory for women to cover their faces, they said, but if a woman happens to be beautiful with a pretty face then in this case for this particular woman it's a must to cover her face because she's attractive it's a source of fitna and also during turbulent times when you walk in the street where people now they do not hesitate to look to screen the sister when she's walking even she's wearing hijab look at her eye um, uh, liners and uh, surma and, 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 and all of that. In this case, the woman must cover because it is a time of fitna or if she's going to the market. So those who say it is me recommended also put some uh, conditions where they said it becomes a must during those conditions. In either case, if you adopted this view, we will respect you, Jazakallah khairan. If you adopted the other view, which is a wajib, may Allah bless you as well, which is better, of course. But that is general. It is not selective. It is not only in certain areas, certain cities or classrooms or among some family members, not the others. No, it is general for before every non-mahram. What about my brother? Ya Sheikh, he's my brother. Yes, but he is not her mahram. And as a matter of fact, an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked the same question. Ya Rasulullah, ara'ayt al-hamu? Qala al-hamu al-mawt. That men should not enter upon women alone. A man should not be with a woman who is not either his wife or mahram, a woman who is not allowed to marry forever. Should they, they should not be alone behind closed doors under any circumstances. So they said, what about the brother-in-law? He said, that's death. That's very dangerous. Not because every brother-in-law is evil. No, or sister-in-law is evil. No, but because he said, sallallahu alayhi wa whenever a man and a woman are alone behind closed doors and they are not neither husband and wife nor related to each other a mahram then the third is Satan and if I have time I can just narrate multiple multiple stories to you in this regard 
So prevention is better than cure. But he is sitting in my presence still. If she has to cover because before me because I'm the sheikh, then she has to cover also the same way before your brother. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Najla from Egypt. Yes, alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khairan. Allah bless you. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Um, uh, if I was late for Eid, al-Fitr prayer uh, or uh, al-Adha prayer, and the Imam was in the second Dakra, and What can I do? Okay, you join the Imam in which part exactly of the prayer? You said in the second rak'ah. Which part after, of the second rak'ah? After, after takbirat. Okay, after the takbirat of the second rak'ah, before ruku', right? Yes. Okay, then simply that was your first rak'ah. Then you complete it with the Imam. Then he makes a slim and you get up to pray your own second rak'ah. Takbirat al-intiqal, Allahu Akbar. Then you make other five takbirat because that is your second rak'ah, not your first rak'ah. And resume as usual. The answer of this question is exactly similar to the answer of the question of what if I miss two rak'ahs in the Maghrib prayer. The hadith which I quoted in Arabic, I didn't get to provide its meaning. فَمَا أَدْرَكْتُمْ فَصَلُّوا Whatever you attend with the Imam, pray with the Imam. وَمَا فَاتَكُمْ فَأَتِمُّوا And whatever you have missed, complete it, not make it up. What difference does it make? The difference which it will make, I understand now, whatever I attended with the Imam was my first rak'ah, regardless which rak'ah is it for the Imam. That is of course only in the Eid and the regular prayers, because if you attend with the Imam in Jumu'ah, after the ruku' of the second rak'ah, then you miss the Jumu'ah. You still attend with him, but you pray Zuhr, four rak'ahs. Four rak'ahs, because you missed the whole prayer, even though you joined him in the sujood or the tashahud before the end of the prayer. So now, what you will do is, you finish with the imam his first rak'ah, then you get up to pray your own second rak'ah. At takbirat, whether the seven takbirat in the first rak'ah, or the five takbirat after takbirat ul intiqal, uh, in the second rak'ah are sunnah. Also, with regards to missing two rak'ahs of the Maghrib prayer, Brother Amr al-Qawli, what you need to do is, the last rak'ah which you attended with the Imam is your first rak'ah. He finishes. Then you get up to pray your second rak'ah. You recite Al-Fatiha and a short surah or a few ayat as much as you want to recite. Then when you sit for sujood of the second rak'ah, you have to sit also for tashahud because that is your second rak'ah, which means you will end up praying three rak'ahs with three tashahud. One after the first rak'ah because you sat with the imam. The second after the second rak'ah because that is your second rak'ah. And the third before ending the prayer. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Muhammad from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I started to uh, collect some amount to purchase to build a mask in, in favor of my deceased wife. Either I use this amount to build a mask or shall I donate it to the TV channels, which is Islamic, uh, like Huda or Peace TV. Which one is the better uh, idea? Jazakallah uh, khairan. Muhammad, you said you started saving some money to do a continuous charity work to benefit your deceased wife, right? Yeah, but I want to build a mask. Okay, may Allah mask. have mercy on her. And may Allah bless you for your keenness to benefit your wife after her departure. If I do have the choice, then I will build a masjid though. That is a continuous charity. And uh, as we mentioned before, that supporting the channels which are spreading da'wah is a very good cause. But I'm giving you my personal choice if I uh, have to do something to benefit my wife or my late father or whoever I love so much. 
I would uh, invest in building uh, a masjid, of course. Every person who will pray in this masjid, uh, a similar word of his or her prayer will go uh, to the person whom you intended to grant the word of building the masjid. Jazakallahu khairan. May Allah bless you. Brother Abu Safwan, with regards to a sahifa and the book, that's called sahifa. It could be a paper, a single sheet, suhuf, you know, the scripture, which, or the, 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 the paper, it was on an animal skin, which they concluded an agreement to boycott the Prophet Sallallahu and his followers when they imprisoned them in the Sha'ab. That's called sahifa. Singular of suhuf. Suhuf, plural of sahifa. Uh, what was given to Ibrahim alayhi salam? Some scriptures. And Al-Kitab is a book, is a whole book. Al-Tawrah was a whole book. Al-Injil was a whole book. And they were given to uh, Musa alayhi salam as Al-Tawrah and Isa alayhi salam as Al-Injil. And also it was called Al-Alwah, which have the teachings that he received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So al alwah the tablets, okay. With regards to uh, Isa alayhi salam and his sharia and whether it was complementary to the message of uh, Musa alayhi salam, yes, it was. Musa alayhi salam was one of the prophets of the children of Israel. And Israel means Jacob, peace be upon him, which in Arabic means Abdullah, the servant of God. They're all the children of Jacob, uh, Israel, peace be upon him. So we have Ishaq, and we have Suleiman, and we have Dawood, and we, we have many prophets from the children of Israel. Isa alayhi salam in Surah al saf in ayah number 6, Said, وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ Remember when Jesus, the son of Mary, said to the children of Israel, the children of Jacob, إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ I am indeed the messenger of Allah unto you. مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيَّ مِنَ التَّوْرَةِ Confirming what has come to you before me, which is at Torah, Torah, Prophet Moses. وَمُبَشِّرًا And giving you a glad tiding. بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي مِن بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدٍ and giving you the glad tidings of a messenger shall come after me. His name is Ahmed, but not from the same chain. Rather, he's a child also of Ibrahim alayhi salam, but from the branch of Ismail. فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ قَالُوا هَذَا سِحْرٌ مُبِينٌ They also denied the message of Isa alayhi salam. The children of Israel denied the message. So Al-Injil is a message continuing the message of at Torah. What is the difference between both of them? And also why only Muslims are being tested? Inshallah on Tuesday we shall begin by answering that because we definitely ran out of time. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test